Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for the final game of the regular season for Ashland Legion post-77. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. Connor Donovan on camera, Tom Nappy on the call. It is a beautiful day for baseball as 6-10-1 post-77. Welcome in 12-4 and four. Newton post 440 in their final regular season game. Let's take a look at the Ashland field. Getting the start on the mound today will be Andrew Keim over at first base, Jake Obid, Greg Holler at second, Mike Messier the shortstop, Brendan Thurber at third, Nick Porter the catcher. From left to right, Nick Burns, Brendan Wolf, and Alex Cohan as Jimmy Hodgson. The shortstop will lead things off for Newton Post, 440. The rest of the Newton lineup, Brendan Devlin batting second, playing center field. Alex Haslam batting third, playing right field. Keenan Juliano in the cleanup role, playing third base. Christian Quigley, the pitcher, batting fifth. Don Procopio, the first baseman, batting sixth. Theo Resnick, the second baseman, batting seventh. Mike Gately, the catcher, batting eighth. And Noah Levine, the left fielder, batting ninth, or expected to bat ninth. Noah Levine did not show up for pregame warm-up, so we will see if he gets the start. Newton is led by head coach James Greeley as the windup and the pitch is in there for a strike. It's James Greeley, first year as the Newton head coach, and so far a pretty good first year, 12 and four, and they are certainly heading to the postseason as that pitch is down low, one and one. And some defensive changes for post 77 today, and they plan to really try to get everybody in there for experience. This is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the ground, picked up by Messier, throw to first, one away. So one down, that'll bring up Brendan Devlin, the center fielder. And of course the commute from Newton at this time, pretty rough with traffic usually. Talking to head coach Mike James Greeley before the game, he said oh, the traffic wasn't too bad today as this one is a grounder to second. Two away, a 4-3 to three ground out for Devlin. And now Alex Haslam, the right fielder, will come to the plate. Haslam steps in as Kime set to deliver. Leg lift and the pitch. In there for a strike. The 0-1 pitch, that one is strike two, grabbing the outside corner. The HCAM Weather Center is reading at 80 degrees today. Clear skies, a beautiful evening. As there's ball one, a one and two count. And it is perfect baseball weather here, also a nice breeze coming in as well. Not too hot, not too humid. This is third base side, glove by Thurber, throw to first, and there is the third out. They go down one, two, three, a six to three, a four to three, then a five to three. We will head to the bottom of the first. It's a scoreless game. We are set for the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Ashland post 77 batting order. Third baseman Brendan Thurber will lead things off. Second baseman Jeff Haller will bat second. Nick Porter, the catcher, batting third. Left fielder Nick Burns in the cleanup role. Andrew Keim, the pitcher, batting fifth. Alex Cohan, the right fielder, batting sixth. Brendan Wolf, the center fielder today, batting seventh. Mike Messier, the shortstop, batting eighth. And Jake Obid, the first baseman, rounding out the post 77 order. As far as the Newton post 440 field, Christian Quigley is getting the start on the mound today. At first base, Don Procopio. Second base, Theo Resnick. Shortstop, Jimmy Hodgson. Over at third base, Keenan Juliano. Quigley's battery mate is catcher Mike Gately. From left to right, Noah Levine. Brendan 
Devlin and Alex Haslam for Newton post 440. And looking over in the left field now, Levine is not in the starting role. It is Cleary who is out there. Liam Cleary getting the start in left field as Levine perhaps held up by what can be a very difficult traffic jam coming out of Newton. Traffic there, certainly not pleasant during rush hour, and some of the players may have gotten held up as Brendan Thurber steps in to face Christian Quigley. Line up and the pitch. That is just low, 1-0. Christian Quigley is out of Newton North High School as this is third base side, foul. One and one. There's a strike. Post 77, they have an opportunity to do some damage here to the playoff seating for Newton if they are able to pull off this win. Newton still playing for seating as Thurber takes one off the back. A leadoff hit batter. That'll bring up Jeff Haller. Taking a look at the standings, we'll start off in zone 5A. As Quigley now going to work from the stretch. Hudson 16 and 2. They're guaranteed a playoff spot and likely going to clinch the top seed as that one is up high. Then you got Newton at 12 and 4, Sudbury at 10 and 8. Ashland 6, 10 and 1, Natick 5 and 12. We'll get you a zone 5B in just a moment. Checking at first, and the throw got away. Thurber is going to Get a free pass over to second base. An errant throw by the pitcher. Zone 5B, Lowell is 14 and two at the top. North Chelmsford 11 and six. Bill Ricka 7, 10 and one. Tingsboro 2, 14, two and 14. Medford one and 16. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the third base side past the shortstop and that will fall into left field for a base hit. Runner held up at third, and there will be runners on the corners with no outs as Holler aboard with the single. Brendan Thurber up to third, Nick Porter to the plate. Quigley working from the stretch delivers. This is hit in the air towards left field, and that'll drop in for a base hit. No, it's foul. Just foul. It looked like it was going to land fair, and then was just foul. And there's no outfield line, so it's not the easiest thing to see. But looking at it now, it was a little bit foul. So good call by the home plate umpire. An 0-1 count on Porter. Quigley from the stretch takes a look at the leading runner at first. And that is a breaking pitch up high. And a Jeff Haller takes off and gets the stolen bag. No throw down the line by Gately. Runners in scoring position now. Wind up and the pitch. And there's strike two. One two pitch from Quigley. On the ground, up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the second baseman, throw to third, and they do get the lead runner, or I should say the second runner. Thurber comes around to score. So it is. So Porter reaches on the, I guess you could call that a sacrifice fielder's choice as Nick Burns will come up. Wind up and the pitch. Two and 
to the set, swinging strike. Nick Burns has really shown his versatility on post 77, being one of their key pitchers, playing in the outfield, and also, of course, first base. One and two. Quigley from the stretch delivers. And this is up the first base side and foul. So Nick Porter over at first. Jeff Haller was thrown out. Trying to head to third. Brendan Thurber scored. One out in the inning. Burns with an opportunity here. Hit high in the air towards the right side in foul territory. Haslam was trying to chase it down but could not get there. Count remains one and two. Quigley from the stretch delivers. That one's just outside two and two. Quigley takes a look at first base, steps off the mound, now back on the mound, awaits the sign. Leg lift and the pitch. Breaking pitch inside. Full count now on Burns. Andrew Kime due up on deck. And this is a liner over to the right side, and that'll drop into right field. For a hit, runner is going to be held up at third. It'll be second and third with one out for Andrew Keim, a double for Burns. That was a rope in a right field there. Keim steps in with two runners in scoring position and one out. Light up and the pitch. That one's in there for a strike. Grabs the outer corner. Quigley set to deliver. Down low, one and one. Alex Cohan will come to the plate. Shell Kime reach. Leg lift and the pitch. And this hit in the air towards center field, towards the fence, and that'll get over the head of Devlin in center field. One run in, a second run is going to come in, and that is a two RBI double by Andrew Keim. A three nothing post 77 lead. Alex Cohan will step in. Quigley takes a look at second and delivers up high. Good save behind the plate by Gately. He winds and deals. 2-0. and oh. Another pitch up high there. Quigley deals, fouled away, two and one. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away behind the backstop. Count remains two and two. Quigley gets the sign. Leg lift and the pitch up high. Three and two now. Quigley having some struggles in this first inning. Already three runs in for post 77. Leg lift and the pitch. That one's fouled away. Count remains full. 
Shall Cohan reach? Brendan Wolf would come up to the plate. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is hit in the air towards center field. Devlin ranging over and makes the catch two away. So Brendan Wolf will come to the plate. Leg left and the pitch, down low. And Newton's still playing as they're kind of neck and neck right now with North Chelmsford and Lowell. They still have a chance to get an upper hand on the seating if they could win a couple. And they also, of course, need some help as this is hit high in the air towards left field and it's handled by Clary, the left fielder. But Ashland, post 77. Scores three times. We head to the second inning. It's 3-0 Ashland. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business. Don't tolerate your pest problem. Eliminate your pest problem. You can call them at 508-366-1820 or find them online at WPCPest.com. Top half of the second inning a three to nothing lead for Ashland post 77. Keenan Juliano steps in as Andrew Kime set to deliver. The wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. To the set and this is hit towards the left side foul. 0-2. Keenan Juliano attends Brimmer and May High School. Graduated last year. The windup and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air towards right center. And it will drop in front of Cohan. And that'll be a stand up double for Juliano to start off the second. And now Christian Quigley will step in, the pitcher. And that looked like a tough one to get to, but certainly a little misdirection out there. As this is a little pop fly towards shallow right, and it was nearly dropped but handled by Obid. One away, man on second, Don Procopio will step in. Don Procopio also out of Newton South High School as there's a strike. Newton North High School, excuse me. From the stretch, down low, good block behind the plate by Porter. One and one. Time deals on the ground up the middle. Glove by the shortstop, Messier. Throw to first, and they got him. Juliano advances to third, two way. Theo Resnick to the plate. Time from the stretch. Strike one. Kime set to deliver. Hit in the air towards center field, and there to make the catch is Brendan Wolf for the third and final out of the top half of the second. To the bottom of the second we go. It's 3 0 Ashland. 
Bottom half of the second inning, post 77 coming back up to the plate, leading things off. The shortstop, Mike Messier, to face Christian Quigley. A 3-0 Ashland lead as this one is a little pop fly above the dirt. And making the catch is Christian Quigley for the first out. Jake Obed will step in. Obed getting the start at first base today. Some switch ups defensively for post 77 as that one's up high. Brendan Wolf got a rare start in center field. Saw him make a nice catch for the third out in the top of the second. Reaching for that one, strike one. A lot of versatility defensively on this Ashland team as that one's up high. Could really throw these guys at just about any position. Three and one. Quigley delivers. Liner up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, got him. Six to three goes Obid. Now Brendan Thurber will step in. Thurber was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Ended up scoring the first run for post 77. Wind up and the pitch down low. One and oh. Quigley delivers up high. Leg lift and the pitch. That one's low. There's a strike. Three and one. Quigley working fast. That one's fouled away. Three and two. Doesn't take much time between pitches. Just gets the sign and deals. That one's low and Thurber draws the walk. Jeff Holler to step in. Check in on Thurber, he slides back safe. Breaking pitch is in there for a strike. Thurber leading off the bag, Quigley awaits the sign. Upstairs. Checking at first, almost got him, but slides back safe. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air to right field and it is going to drop into the glove of Haslam. Nice job on the chase down for the third out of the inning, we will head to the top of the third. It's three nothing, post 77. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Fletcher Tilton, attorneys at law, serving central Massachusetts and beyond with responsive solutions guided by three basic principles, integrity, leadership, and excellence. Fletcher Tilton, find them online at FletcherTilton.com. Top half of the third inning. Eight, nine, and one do up for Newton. 
The wind up and the pitch from Kime. And therefore a strike. Mike Gately, the catcher at the plate. 3 0 lead for Ashland. All three runs came in the bottom of the first as that one is hit out of play. 0 oh 2. Kime awaits the sign and deals. And this is on the ground, left side, played by Thurber, throw to first, one away. Now stepping in, Liam Cleary, the left fielder. Leg left and the pitch, just outside. Cleary is at a Dexter High School in his last year of Legion eligibility. As there's a strike. Kime deals, swinging strike, one and two. Wind up and the pitch. And this is a rocket up the middle. That'll get through for a base hit. Got right by Holler and Messier. And now Jimmy Hodgson will step in. So one out single for Cleary. Newton trying to get the bats going, and now Kime will work from the stretch. There's strike one. Kime awaits the sign. And this is a liner, and that'll drop into right field for another base hit. First and second now. Cleary up to second, Hodgson on first, Devlin to the plate. Kime delivers, the bunt up the third baseline and foul. Oh and one. If post 77 holds on, it'll certainly be a bit of a burden for Newton to try to get that second seed. Wind up and the pitch. And that is up the third base side foul. 0 and 2. Still a long way to go in this one. And a bit of a jam now is Kime and post 77. 2 on, 1 out. 0 2 count on the lefty. Brendan Devlin. Kime needs a timeout. He'll step off the mound. Kime from the stretch. And this is going to take a couple hops up the middle. Glove by the second baseman. High throw, but they get one. So they get the force out at second. Nice job by Holler. Cleary pushes up to third. Devlin at first. Hodgson picked off. So that's a sacrifice for Devlin, and now Alex Haslam will come in. Actually, no sacrifice there, as that was the second out. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. So that would go down as a fielder's choice. Kime from the stretch. Up high. 
One and one. Kime gets the sign and deals. And this is up the middle. Takes a couple hops on the infield. Grass gloved by Holler. Throw to first. Not a problem. A four to three out for the third out of the inning. Three nothing. Post 77 as we head to the bottom of the third. Three, four, and five do up for Ashland post 77 as Nick Porter will start things off, followed by Nick Burns and Andrew Kime. Christian Quigley in for his third inning of work. A 3 0 lead for post 77. The lineup and the pitch. And this is hit in the air towards right field and on the track down is Alex Haslam for the first out. Covering some good field out there. And now Nick Burns will step in. For those of you just joining us, you're watching Ashland Allegiant Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. Connor Donovan on camera, Tom Nappy on the call. The windup and the pitch. In there for strike one on Burns, who hit a double and scored a run in the first inning. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, one and one. Nick Burns has just been such an incredible player for Hopkinton High School and of course Ashland post 77 as that pitch was outside one and one on the ground right side and that'll get through the gap for a single Burns two for two on the day Andrew Kime will come to the plate Kime had the hit in the first inning that drove in Burns an RBI double that was the third Ashland run of the day Quigley gets the sign and deals. Down low, 1-0. Wind up and the pitch, 2-1. 2-0, excuse me. Runner leading off of first. Taking off from first. This is up the third base side, and it is fair. And the runner will be stopped at third. It looked like maybe it was going to roll foul, but it did not. So that is a single for Kime. Burns moves up to third. And now with one out, Alex Cohan will come to the plate. And that was just down the line. Nice piece of hitting by Kime. Quigley from the stretch, runners leading. Hit high in the air towards center field. It is handled. Burns going to try to score. The throw in is cut off, and it's 4-0 post-77. Credit Cohan with the sacrifice fly out and RBI as Brendan Wolf will step in. Still a runner on first, two outs. Quigley deals. That one outside, 1-0. One oh. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air towards center field and ranging over to make the catch is Devlin for the third out, but not before. Post 77 plates another run. It's 4 to nothing as we head to the fourth. Top half of the fourth inning, a four to nothing post 77 lead. A couple position changes to tell you about. Jeff Holler takes over for Mike Messier over at shortstop. Michael Krupe taking over at second base. And it appears Mike Messier will have the rest of the day off as stepping in is Keenan Giuliano, the third baseman and cleanup hitter to face Andrew Kime in his fourth inning of work. 
As this is up the left side, loved by Holler. Throw to first, and they got him. And no, they're going to call him safe. They're going to say the throw pulled Obid's foot off the bag. So Juliano does reach. That was a tough play to make. But since he did get the throw, I think you got to give the error. And now Christian Quigley, the pitcher, steps in. As this is a pop fly over on the first base side and getting under it for the easy out is Obed. One down, Dom Procopio will come up to the plate. Copio grounded out his last time up in the second inning. That was almost a really nice play by Jeff Haller to start things off as that one's fouled away. 0-1. Oh Kime from the stretch. Runner leading off of first. Down low. 1-1. One and I think throughout this game, regardless of the score, you'll probably see post-77 give everyone a taste. It, it's the last regular season game. Not necessarily the last game. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment. The windup and the pitch. Down low. Porter trying to save it. Digs it out of the dirt. Throw to second. And they got him. Nick Porter. What a throw down the line. Or I should say up the middle. So Juliano is caught trying to take off. That was certainly a close play and head coach of Newton Post 440, James Greeley did not like that call that much. So he came out to have a couple words. Wind up and the pitch. Of course, I think he knows that he doesn't have the best view over there from the dugout, so he'll get his two cents in and head back to the bench. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. It's now bases clear with two outs and a full count. Kime delivers. This is hit in the air, left side, and it is going to be caught by Nick Burns. Burns was almost pushed all the way back to the wall, but is able to make the catch to retire the top half of the fourth. Ashland leading 4 nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Michael Krupe stepping in to face Christian Quigley. And on the first pitch, it's going to be a slow roller up the middle. Glove by the shortstop, throw to first, and Krupe goes down 6-3. to three. Krupe took over at second base last half inning as Jeff Haller moved over to short. Obid steps in. Wind up and the pitch. That's just high. I think you're going to see everyone maybe get a, get in this game at some point, or just about everyone. Wind up and the pitch. That's out. Side. And we are telling you last inning that, despite this being the last regular season game for Ashland, who is not going to make the playoffs, unfortunately, it's not necessarily the last game as there's a swinging strike. And the reason for that is, is Leo Noche, the, really the, the leader for Zone 5, had a tournament for the losing teams. Invented a tournament for the losing teams as that pitch down low. And, and it's called the Commissioner's Cup. Leo Noche, of course, the commissioner of Zone 5. As that one's fouled away, 3-2. and two. So Ashland will be participating in the Commissioner's Cup as well as every other team that doesn't make the playoffs, as this is up the third base side and foul. 
Leo Noche is the head coach of Sudbury. To the set. And this is third base side. Glove by the third baseman. Throw to first, not a problem. So a bit goes down 5-3 to three for the second out. Brendan Thurber will step in. Wide up and the pitch. Breaking pitch is going to get in there for a strike. Good movement on that one. This is a liner that'll drop in a left center. Thurber is going to round first, still being tracked down in the outfield. And Thurber is going to be safe with a stand-up double. Jeff Haller will step in. Wide up and the pitch. There's a strike. So a two out double. Breaking pitch is going to land just high. One and one. That one's down low. Two and one. Now as far as the format of the Commissioner's Cup tournament, I'm not quite sure. Ashland may have a home game. They are, I guess, what would be uh, one of the teams that have the best records in that tournament. Two and two count now. They'll probably be a team or two above them, but maybe they'll get a home game out of it. Leg lift and the pitch. That one's up high. And you see a lot of zones doing that now as they'll have an additional tournament for the team, for the teams that don't advance to the postseason. Check in at second, runner slides back just safe. Quigley deals swinging strike, and that will do it for the bottom of the fourth. As Holler goes down swinging, we will head to the fifth inning. It's a 4 nothing post-77 lead. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Dentist Sad Hopkinton, located at 77 Main Street, providing comprehensive dental care for clients of all ages from childhood through adults in a comfortable and relaxed setting. Find them online at hopdent.com. A 4-0 lead for Ashland as Theo Resnick, the second baseman, steps in to face Kime. The windup and the pitch down low. And a strike. 0-1. Look low from here, but must have made it over the plate. But the strike zone, I'll say, it's been a good strike zone tonight. It's been very consistent. Leg lift and the pitch. There's strike two. And it's been right in the range where you would expect it. Very well called game so far. So this is hit up the middle, a slow roller, throw to first, one away. A six to three ground out for Resnick, and now Mike Gately, the catcher, steps in. That's fouled away, 0-1. Gately grounded out his last time up in the third. And 
And this is hit in the air towards left center. That'll drop in for a base hit. Burns trying to track it down in left field as well as Wolf. And the hitter will be safe at second with a stand-up double. Gately tattooed that one. Now Liam Cleary will come up. Had a single his last time up. Wind up and the pitch. That one is low, 1-0. Oh. And I have to say, Kime has been pitching pretty well today. He's facing a good lineup here with Newton post 440, and so far it's been a nice start. Swinging strike. One and one. Time from the stretch. Swinging strike, one and two. Time set to deliver. Just outside, two and two. Kaim awaits the sign. Runner leading off of second. Swinging strike. There's out number two. And that is the first strikeout of the day for Andrew Kaim. Jimmy Hodgson will step in. Wind up and the pitch. That one's fouled away. And Kime's the kind of pitcher, he's not going to overwhelm you with his fastball, but he's consistent. Usually hits his marks and has a good selection of breaking pitches. Wind up and the pitch. And this is a little bloop shot in a center. That'll drop in for a base hit. Runner being waved around. The throw in cut off, and it's 4-1. to one. An RBI single for Hodgson. Brendan Devlin will step in. Center fielder, he's 0 for 2 today. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one on the lefty. Runner leading off of first time from the stretch. And this is hit high in the air towards center field, but there to make the catch is Brendan Wolf for the third out of the inning. Newton does play to run. It's 4-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Ashland leading Newton. Bottom of the fifth inning. 3-4-5 and five due up for post 77. Porter Burns and Kime to face Christian Quigley, who's back out for another inning of work. It's now a 4-1 to one game in favor of Ashland. Newton picked up a run in the top half of the inning. As Burns steps in, the wind up and the pitch. And this is hit up the middle and will get into center field for a single. I'll bring up Nick Burns. And it looks like it was Alex Cohan briefly warming up to perhaps come in and pitch, but he's getting ready to hit soon if needed. As that one is down low in the dirt, 1-0. Oh. As he ran over to the bench to grab his gloves. 
Time called as the umpire will dust off home plate. And the other team with a couple of Hopkinton players is Milford Legion. Get you an update on them as that one is down low. Right now they're tied in postseason action. One game elimination versus Shrewsbury, 5-5. Five five. They're in extra innings now. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. Hopkinton natives, Matt DeSena and Andrew McMillan representing Hopkinton on Milford Legion this year. As there's a strike, 2-2. Two and two. And they started off with a rough season, Mill for Legion, but really turned it around and make a playoff push. Three and two now. Quigley delivers, and this is chopped in the air towards right center, and it is caught by Devlin. Runner will head back to first. So one away, runner on first, Andrew Keim to the plate. Quigley from the stretch, the leg lift and the pitch. That is just low. One and oh. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. One and one. Set to deliver, runner taking off from first. This is on the ground, slow roller, no one's there. And everybody's going to be safe. That was just simple mispositioning. It looked like Resnick was going to head over to second to cover in case it was a throw down the line, throw up the middle. Kime reaches on a single, Porter up to second. And I'm not even going to give Porter the steal on that one. He was already taken off mid-pitch. Alex Cohan steps in. Two on, one out. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the third base side, foul. Oh and one. Quigley set to deliver. Upstairs, one and one. Wide up and the pitch. And this is a pop fly and it is going to be dropped. But that is the infield fly rule. So it does not matter. So you could rule that in out. Two away as Brendan Wolf will step in. Runners on first and second, two outs, Wolf to the plate. Wind up and the pitch. And that one's hit foul. And of course, any pop fly in the infield with a runner on base is the infield fly rule, hence the out. Quigley with the leg left and the pitch. As this is hit right up the middle off of Quigley. He'll pick it up and flip it underhand to first base for the out. And we will head to the six. It's a 4-1 lead for post 77. <laughs> Top half of the sixth inning is stepping in. Alex Haslam, the right fielder. Andrew Keim out there for another inning of work. As he's had a great start so far today. 
There's a strike. Haslam 0 for 2 on the day so far. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the third base side, down the line, and it is foul. 0 and 2. Good thing that was foul. That would have been a tough one to throw over. Kaim awaits the sign. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the right side, gloved by Obid, and he will tag the bag for the three unassisted. Keenan Juliano, the third baseman, will step in. 0 for 1, he's reached on an error, however. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike, 0 and 1. Kime delivers inside. One and one count. And this is a pop fly, and it's going to be tracked down by the first baseman for the second out. Obed came rushing in. That one was tough to judge where it was going to land. It was kind of moving around up there. As Christian Quigley will step in. 0 for 2 on the day. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Kime deals. Fouled away, 0-2. The way Kime's pitching today, you wonder why we haven't seen him more this season on the mound. Time called. Looks like Porter is going to take this opportunity. Come talk to Kime. Talk about what to throw here in this 0 and 2 situation with two outs. Kime has not thrown a whole lot of pitches either. It's been relatively short innings defensively for post 77. Only three hits and one run given up. The leg lift and the pitch. And this is chopped right to the shortstop. Good positioning by Holler. He will make the catch for the third out. They go down one, two, three. Post 77 leading four to one as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning, Michael Krupe will step in for his second time today. Grounded out in the fourth. He replaced Mike Messier in the batting order and took over at second base as Jeff Holler moved over to shortstop. This was back in the third. New pitcher for Newton. We'll tell you about him in a minute. As that pitch is down low. New pitcher is Evan Nahabedian out of Newton South High School. Graduated this year. There's a strike, one and one. He's a six-foot righty. Leg lift and the pitch. The bunt is fouled away, one and two. Now 
Naha Bedian delivers. And that is chopped foul. Out of play. One and two count. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs, two and two. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a the ball, three and two. Swinging strike, one away. We have a pinch hitter for post 77. Tom Onzi at the plate. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. I see, I told you, you're probably going to see everyone in this game. And this is foul, 0-2. Thurber is on deck. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike, two away. Second strikeout in a row by Naha Bedian. Now Thurber steps in, he's having a good day. 0 for 2, was hit by a pitch in the first quarter run. Also has a double today. Thurber has really had a nice season for Ashland Legion. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, 1 and 0. There's a strike, one and one. Now Habedian gets the sign. There's strike two. Could strike out the side here. Down low, two and two. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away, fought off by Thurber. There's strike three. And that will do it for the bottom of the sixth. But Newton is down to their final three outs, four to one, Ashland heading to the top of the seventh. HKM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They're a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hopkinton Drug is located at 52 Main Street. HKM Sports also supported by... Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit them at WebsterFirst.com. Newton is down to their final three outs. Top of the seventh, Procopio, Resnick, and Gately do up. That is the six, seven, and eight, and eight hitters. As Kime going for the complete game. First pitch up the middle, takes a couple hops, and... It was Holler going for the backhand, was not able to get it in the glove, and Procopio is aboard. I'll give that a single. That did not look routine. And that'll bring up Resnick. From the stretch. Runner leading off of first. This is up the middle. This time he does have it. Throw to second for one. Throw to first. And he dug it out. A 6-4-3. Double play, and Newton is down to their final out. Some 
good defense by Jeff Holler. Milford took a lead on Shrewsbury in the top of the eighth, but Shrewsbury just tied it again. It's six to six in that game. That's a playoff game in District Four. And the batter will take one off the back. Gately is aboard. Now Liam Cleary will come to the plate. We are going to have a pinch hitter for Newton. And it is Levine, who was the scheduled starter. Got here a little late, though, due to traffic. No Levine in there. As this is hit in the air to right field towards the fence, and it is caught by Tom Onzi, who took over this inning in right field. And post-77 closes out the regular season with the victory. An impressive 4-1 to win over Newton. Quite a nice game by post 77 and not a bad way to wrap up regular season play. Newton, one of the better teams in the zone and you get the four to one win and you take a young team out of the season with built up confidence, a lot of experience. And despite Ashland finishing the regular season seven, 10 and one, it's not necessarily a bad thing. This is a young team, and they certainly built a lot of confidence this season and got a lot of good experience. I expect Ashland from this point on to really just continue to improve. Let's take a look at the recap. We'll start off in the first inning because that is where all the action happened, well, most of it. Post-77 played at three runs. Thurber started things off. He was hit by a pitch, a single by Holler, and then Nick Porter would end up driving in. Porter with the, uh, Porter drove in Thurber, excuse me, with the RBI as he was able to reach first on the fielder's choice. It was a sacrifice. And then Nick Burns with a double, and then a two RBI double by Andrew Keim would score Porter and Burns. And then the next run, in the game would also be scored by post 77 in the bottom of the third as Alex Cohan drove in Nick Burns. That would make it four to nothing at the time. The only Newton run came in the fifth as Mike Gately scored after he hit a double on a one out Jimmy Hodgson RBI single. And that would make the final score four to one. Newton scored one run, had four hits, committed one error Ashland had four runs on nine hits and committed no errors. Post-77 played very good defensively today. Andrew Kime pitched the complete game, pitched a gem. Seven innings pitched, giving up four hits and one run. He also did not walk a whole lot. He did hit a batter, but besides that, no walks for Kime, and he also had a pair of strikeouts. But Ashland Post 77 defeats Newton in the final game of the season by a final score of 4-1. to one. All right, I'm here with head coach of Ashland Post 77, Derek Johnson. Coach, a pretty good season, a young team this year. Obviously, things didn't end up the way that you would have hoped, but certainly a lot of good experience gained this year by these players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, coming into the year, I, you know, I took the job two weeks before the season started. And, you know, we had a lot of young kids, but, you know, we have some veterans that help them along the way. Um, you know, started off tough, but came on, you know, I had right before I went away for a couple of days, we were won 3 0 and 1 in our last four. We had a good spot to come in and beat some teams this week and get into the 14 playoff. Fortunately, it didn't go the way it went when we wanted it to. So, but yeah, it was a strong year. Once we figured out, you know, getting a solid infield in there and, you know, not making the mistakes and capitalizing off other teams' mistakes, you know, we won some ball games and the hitting, hitting and pitching's always been there for us. It's just our defense. So. And it seems there's a good amount of versatility on this team, and there's been some defensive struggles, but a lot of moving pieces here that you could 
throw around the diamond and it just seems that the defensive struggles are really an experience thing and maybe a little bit because of the age uh a little bit you know a couple the moves we made were to get actually the younger kids in um you know give them some time in there too but at the same time you know it, it was all around it wasn't just one person whatever and you know with you know kids all right hey next man up you know if you're not gonna make the plays and you were going to bring the next man in, and we're going to keep doing that until we find someone that can stay there. And, you know, that's pretty much what we did. We found a good rotation as, you know, middle of the year came and stuck with it the rest of the year. Now, a great win to wrap up the season against a tough Newton team. 4-1, to Andrew Kime pitched a great game. Can you talk about his performance today? Oh, it was awesome. He hasn't really pitched that much for us this year, but, you know, with us, I think the only day off was Saturday, and we've been, you know, I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head, a lot of games in a row. Didn't have anybody normal pitches to go today, and he got a spot start, and he did awesome. He pitched earlier in the week in relief, and uh, first game of the year other than that. So, But, no, he was great today. He kept the ball down, ground balls, and then, you know, fly balls were majority out. But other than that, yeah, he was really big for us today. So, overall, how did your first season coaching Ashland Legion Baseball go? <laughs> Not too bad. It was fun. You know, little ups and downs. But, you know, I'm looking forward to go at it early next year. And uh, you know, get the numbers out again, and you know, hopefully, get it. You know, get a good solid team. You know, we got a good group of young kids, you know, this year that we can build off of. But you know, can't wait to get at it next year and see where we can go. Well, you still got the Commissioner's Cup to try to get, don't you? Absolutely, we, we're definitely gonna try and go get that, and you know, hopefully everything works out. So. All right, Coach. Well, uh, best of luck to you. We hope you're back for next season, and we look forward to uh, seeing the team next year. Appreciate it. Thank you. That is going to wrap up game coverage of Ashland Legion Baseball. Stay tuned to find out if we'll have any tournament games, but this does wrap up the regular season. We thank you for watching all season long on WACA-TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. For my cameraman, Connor Donovan, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for joining us on this broadcast of Ashland Legion Baseball.